Hi, I'm not a natural storyteller. Yeah, my story about making something from nothing needs to be told. Since childhood, I've been fascinated by folklore, improbable yet possible. A favorite, stone soup. How does a stranger convince others that a stone in a pot of warm water makes a tasty soup? For centuries, people have believed and add ingredients. All feasts, learning something from nothing gives hope for better times. There are so many stone soups. My favorite is Daisy Duck making button soup, outfoxing her miserly Uncle Scrooge and feeding all the other Disney characters. Reflecting on my clinical practice as a public health nurse, I slowly learned how to make stone soups, offering people hope and health. It's magical to cook something up and feed a crowd. Many times a recipe starts with what clients said or did not say during home visits. Their stories, secrets, fears, assume nothing that could change. I parked my agendas and assumptions, listening even to silence. The essence of nursing, no matter the setting, if you listen, change happens, and those you care for and about will take charge of their everyday lives. Stone soup recipes can start another way, from a profound experience you relive and never want to happen to others. One day, walking to my car, I noticed a young man strolling across the street. At the car, I tossed my purse on the passenger seat, sensed someone behind me, turned. The same person I just saw, pointing a handgun at me, demanding, give me your purse or I will kill you. Looking straight in his eyes, I blurted, I can't believe you're doing this to a nurse. You're a nurse, just give me your money. I handed over what I had in my pocket. He took off with two tea bags and a $10 bill. A month later, he was apprehended, just turned 18, extensive juvenile, record of robbing neighbors, shoppers, me, burglarizing homes, dealing drugs. As a victim and witness, I was so unprepared and fearful about the torturous steps to trial. Then re reality hit. I'm angry, not afraid. And I surprisingly cared about this kid. His fate, where's his family? Why are lives so fractured? Nothing in this community prevents children from growing up to be violent criminals. How could I concoct a soup preventing such end results? A spark of an idea I knew I had to do with inner city mothers and their children. Over the years, fine soups are added to the stone soup cookbook, but the finest recipe of all ever made based on that spark began two decades ago. It still takes my breath away I had the honor and challenge of creating such a rich, enduring soup for Philadelphia families to be safer, smarter, stronger. In 2001, the health department, although they did not know this, called for a very special stone soup to address high rates of child abuse, neglect, and youth violence. The core ingredients, public health nurses and staff, person-centered in-home care, and the mother-baby home visit program, Nurse Family Partnership, NFP. Time to name that recipe, heat up the soup, hire nurse home visitors, serve to pregnant parenting mothers their babies until age two. Witness what happens. Today, more than 6,000 mothers and families have been served. Mothers healthier, finished school, employed, reach life goals. Their children brighter, preschool ready, far less involved in child welfare or justice systems. Meaningful data points, but what families and nurses say give me bragging rights. Moms and families are the best recruiters ever for others to savor the NFP stone soup. What they share is food for the soul. And I, with their consent, share their voices with you. I will always remember my nurse. I learned to trust someone who listened and respected me. As grandma, I opened my door to a stranger who is now part of our family. My NFP baby is in college. It took a long time to believe in myself. She is my guiding star. And I just wanted to be like my nurse 
and I'm an NFP nurse now too. Nurses who stir and serve the soup to moms and babies are special. They're inspired, reflective about their health, public health practice. It is like evaporated milk. You dilute and add it to the NFP soup. Their voices. I thought about quitting, leaving nursing completely, and then I found this public health job. Families teach me and so want to be loving, prepared parents. I learned how to parallel park. Yay. Moms taught me street savvy. I love NFP and working in this community. Graduation time. She will sail off the winds in her sails, charting her own course. The original NFP stone soup simmers on, truly 24-7 labor of love. As our community adds spices, civil law attorneys, childhood educators, it has different flavors in the startup. It's time for a new recipe, perhaps alphabet soup. Now you know who I am and what I do. I make stone soups to keep people thriving out of hospitals, jails, and communities healthier. And together we can make magical stone soups from nothing. Ah, wonderful. Thank you, Kay. I have to say, when I first learned of NFP a couple of years ago, I was just really blown away by what the model is, how it how it works today and, and the impact. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for that. Um, you talk about like listening and change a good uh, a good amount. And in fact, you said, if you listen, change happens, which is uh, a quote that I'm going to use from now on. Uh, what are some ways that you think people should be listening more and, and, and looking for where they can create change? Well, I, I always thought you needed to fill your space with your voice. But sometimes that's just chatter. Mm. And sometimes it's just being a quiet, attentive individual everywhere in society in particular. We get our minds get so cluttered. We're so filled with things, including, you know, everything that's on the computer these days. But when you work with people, particularly if they're in their, in their space, which is their home, sometimes it's just really good. I think it's very positive for everyone just to be with be present. Yeah. And. And I think it's something you, you learn to appreciate as you grow older, mm -hmm. that being present is more important sometimes than telling someone what to do or how to do it or make them feel like they need to do something. Wonderful. Yeah, I like, I like the connection there also with um, what Victoria and I were talking about is that sometimes the simple act of being present um, does, does so much, uh, but people don't always give it the time or the, or the recognition that it deserves. So great. Kay, thanks so much for sharing your story with us tonight.